to the yard where I'm going to pick some tea leaf um, this will give me the opportunity to show you guys what it looks like <clears throat> and to just kind of show it to you here is the tea leaf that's what it looks like um, you definitely want to just pick the greener ones and basically what it is is it's just a four um, flavor so you cut it at the base and um, I'll come back and show you so what it looks like. This is like. what it looks like basically and I cut it right here at the stem point. Um, usually I would like it to be a little bit bigger but our tree as you can see hasn't really grown um, all that much since we trimmed it. And um, tea leaf in Hawaii has so many different uses for a lot of different things. So. You know we're constantly utilizing the tree um it is widely found in hawaii i'm not too sure where in the other parts but almost every yard here in hawaii you can find a tea leaf tree so i'm gonna head home and clean this up and basically just debone it and i'll try to show that part so on. basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tea leaf which i already cut this one and you're going to be bonus. Um, I like to just cut along the side. Old school way is to kind of snip it right here and actually pull the hard bone part that's in the middle down. And I cut it up the side on both sides. So you'll end up with two strips that look like this. Um, again, like I said, it really doesn't matter the size um, of it because it's really there just for the flavor. So it has a more authentic Kahlua pig flavor. Um, it, when they put it into the emu, which is like there's a big underground um, where they dig a pit and they put the whole pig in there for roasting, um, they have tea leaves and banana leaves in there and that's what really adds to all of that hearty flavor that you like um, in a Kahlua pig that roasted smoky, it helps keep all the smoke in. So I bought, I grabbed four leaves and um, I'm going to go ahead and debone them like this and um, I'll show you the rest of the preparation. Okay, so you want to make sure that you preheat your oven, your oven, preheat your oven, preheat your oven to 420 degrees. Now what I have here is a pork butt. Um, this should be a bone-in pork butt. That's what the thing said. I purchased this from our local bulk store um, for $17. And it was frozen, so I had to let it defrost. Um, let's see, I pulled it out to defrost on Monday. Today is Wednesday. So it was rock hard because we store it in our really big freezer outside. Now, this is probably about 13 to 16 pounds. Um, let me look at the paperwork really quick so that you guys can know. It is... Oh, I was completely wrong. It's 8.45 pounds, so this is smaller than I normally make it. Now, I'm going to put it in a pan. You can use a larger size pan. This is a half pan that I have here. And you want to make sure that the fat is up. The reason being is all the juices, once it starts cooking, will seep into the meat, and that's what's going to keep the meat very soft and moist. Now, I'm taking a really sharp knife, and basically what I'm going to do is stab the crap out of it. You want to stab the fat part up like this this way because what that's going to do is allow all the juices and everything to soak in there while it cooks because this is a whole big piece of meat now make sure before you do any work on food that you have your area clean as well as your hands i scrub my hands really well um just want to make sure that you have that and as you know, as long as this cooks, it's still a very easy dish to do. 
So I have basically stabbed it like crazy. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and put your knife on the side. Now I keep my Hawaiian salt in here. This is basically rock salt. We call it Hawaiian salt because it is actually found here. It is sea salt. And you want to pour a generous amount, like I said, make sure your hands are clean. Pour a generous amount over the meat. What this will do is not only help to flavor the meat, but it'll also help soften it as well. It's like a tenderizer. You want to make sure you have a really good generous amount. And then you want to kind of rub some of it into the little cracks and crevices that we just um we just made with the knife make sure that your knife is sharp to make this so you can get you know get it pretty good you don't have to like dig your fingers in there just kind of like push it in and then you want to flip the piece of meat over and make sure that you salt the bottom side as well It may seem like a lot of salt, but this is a really big piece of meat, and it's going to be cooking for several hours. The thing about Hawaiian Kalu Pig is that it really does have a salty taste to it, but that's what makes it so good and juicy. Once you get all of that done, turn the meat back over. Got all your salt there. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my hands, and then we're going to add um, smoke sauce to that and or liquid smoke the liquid smoke will give it that smoky flavor um, which is really awesome because we're not smoking it or putting it underground so this will be our way to really give that flavor I'm using concentrated liquid smoke this is by rights it's an all-natural hickory seasoning you can find this at any grocery market pretty much um, I've seen them sold in the mainland so it's not just here and you want to put about a quarter of a cup to half a cup. Now, there's a lot of salt on the bottom, so what I'm going to do basically is just take some of that and rub it into the meat again. And you kind of, maybe not massage it, but you want to make sure that you get flavoring everywhere on this meat. Make sure you get it all in there. Now that you have that done, what's so good about this, I'm going to wash my hands again, is that there's no, oops, I apologize, there is no pepper in this particular meal. It's just these two items and your tea leaf. If you have a hard time finding tea leaf, that's okay. This is mainly just for flavoring. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the strips that I've created for the tea leaf, and I'm going to lift up the pork. Again, this is pork butt, and I'm going to place it on the bottom. You want to place the shiny side of the tea leaf down. And I'm going to put three strips, and put this piece of meat in like that. Then I'm going to take three strips and or whatever strips is left over and cover the meat this way shiny side up just like that you don't have to make it nice just like so okay I of course I need to wash my hands again I'm going to get out a piece of foil and I'm going to go ahead and cover it with foil. You want to cover it pretty well. So, what I like to do is take a long piece of foil and I'm going to kind of tent it when I put it over, but still cover it completely because it's like a roast. You want it to just roast up in there. I've already preheated my oven, like I said, to 420 degrees. And regular bake is fine. You don't want to boil, you'll burn your meat. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to take my piece of foil, shiny side up, and it just looks like this, two pieces of foil, which I'm going to fold over together. And there's the fold in the middle here. Just like that. I'm going to cover up the sides really well. And then you're going to, oops. And then you're going to go ahead and put it in the oven again at 420 degrees. Make sure you preheat your oven because it'll take longer. And basically I just covered it like this. And then I'm going to kind of lift the part in the middle up. So it's like tented, but it's still completely covered. And um, that way it'll let all the steam and the juices and everything in there kind of just work its magic. This tiny little pork butt here can cook, this tiny little pork butt here can cook for about four hours before it just completely falls apart. Um, in some cases, I will cook it five to six hours because we want it soft. The thing about Kalo Pig is that it is very soft, very moist, very fall apart. And that's how you want this to be. So you can leave it in there as long as you want. I will put it in for an hour and a half, come back, check it, open it up, see how it is, come back and put it back in the oven for another hour and check it like that every hour. You do not, I'm just really anal like that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put this in and I'll be back in about an hour and a half to two hours where we open the oven and see how it's doing. See you in a bit. So it's been about three and a half hours and this is how the meat looks. As you can see, the... Um, tea leaf did brown and it also soaks up the smoke. This is how it looks. I'm going to take um, it just look at that. I'm barely touching it and it's just falling off the bone. That's how you want it but I'm actually going to put it in for a little bit longer. Probably, a, oh my gosh. Okay, I need to put a little bit of that on the side see make sure it has enough flavoring but you see how soft it is it is seriously like falling apart it's very very hot if you're gonna test it oh my god that is delicious absolutely freaking delicious very soft but I'm still going to put it in the oven for another 45 minutes and come back and test it again. Like I said, it's been in there about three and a half hours. So I'm going to put it in for four and a half minutes. That means it'll be four hours. I'll test it again, make sure it's still soft. And then what I'll do is I'll shred it. Um, well, pull all the tea leaf away, shred it up, and then put it back in the oven. So it'll sit in the juices and soak up all of that flavor. So, I'll see you guys in about an hour. So, it has been um, an hour or 45 minutes since the last time I came to you guys. And I just want to show you. I'm actually going to put it in the oven just a little bit more. But the meat is so darn soft that it's literally fallen into the gravy. Um, just on its own. That's how soft it is. And I can just literally pull pieces of it. And I'm not even putting a lot of pressure. That's how you want it to be. I mean, it's seriously so soft. I'm not even pulling on it that hard. You want it to like sit in the gravy because that's how it's going to get a little extra saltier, smokier flavor. And I'm actually going to throw, oh, look at that piece right there. I'm going to throw this back in the oven for just another 40 minutes and um, come back and check it. Because some parts on the inside, even if very soft, I want it to kind of fall apart on its own 
after this 45 minutes if it's still um, the middle part is not completely just falling apart on its own like the outsides did then I'm gonna shred it but it is still so I mean even if it's not completely falling apart it is still so so soft the meat is absolutely just tender fall off the bone so another 45 minutes so what I did was I took the pork butt and transferred it over to a larger pan um, just so that it wouldn't the gravy wouldn't you know go crazy on it and I actually as I transported it from one pan to the other it started breaking up um, then I just continue to shred it completely until it's almost like a roast pork but you shred it so that it's just really soft meat just like this let it soak in you can definitely put it back in the oven if you want for another half an hour um, which I might do and yeah that's basically it you can serve it like this with hot sticky rice or I'm gonna go ahead and um, actually make some poke which is raw ahi tuna um, with different vegetables and stuff like that and I will actually come back and film that as well so you guys can put the whole dish together so this is the it part for the Kahlua pig